Yo, what's up YouTube? What's happening? No, no. I've been watching too many American videos, haven't I? Sorry. Okay, so here I am back to normal. <laughs> uh, the uh, sort of South English accent. Right, um, what are we going to do now? So we've got this chassis. We've got this still on the axles and we need to do some work to it. We need to do some rust removal and some painting. And the best thing to do that, well, the best way to do that is to get it up on a rotisserie. Now I have a rotisserie. I will show you in this video how to make one. Uh, very, very cheaply, very, very easy. If you can weld, you can make one. So um, what we're gonna do is get the chassis up on the rotisserie. So how are we gonna do that? Let's go and have a look. Look at this weather, look. Everything's soaking wet. All the ground's soaking wet. Puddles on the tires. Chassis soaking wet, everything soaking wet as the tub there. Look at the sky. Hey! Not a cloud in the sky. Work that out, huh? Crazy. Right, so we've got to get this up on the on the rotisserie. Now I want to get access to this rear cross member because I want to straighten it. If you remember it's it's bowed at the ends, I'm gonna try and straighten it. I'm gonna cut out these welds here across the top. And then there's a weld down here. I'm going to cut that and see if I can pull this out. See what happens. Uh, there's just out. We're getting ready for some action. Um, so obviously I don't want to be bolting straight to here where the um, where the tow bar goes. But under here there's a couple of bolt holes. One there and there's one there. Okay, so they're just either side of these holes here. Um, and I'm going to use them. So I'll make some brackets and bring the chassis up. Um, on the front. I'm not exactly sure what to do yet. I'm going to get the, the rear done and then obviously the height has to be the same. So on the front here we've got these dumb irons. We've got some holes in the side. So I think I can use those. Those holes there. Um, and then there's a hole under here as well. So I could perhaps make an L-shaped bracket. Because you've got to remember that not only has it got to support it that way. It's not only got to support it this way. Like this. But when you turn it over it's going to be hanging sideways and then upside down so it has to be a very very rigid solid mounting it doesn't need you don't want it to flex or it'll twist the chassis so or, or it'll twist off of the, the mounting it won't twist the chassis the chassis is solid but um <clears throat> so let me uh, just have a look and see what i can do and start cutting up some bits of scrap okay so here we are we've got the this is the main mounting off of the um, engine stand that i'm going to use for my rotisserie more on that in a minute then i've got these old um, brackets from somewhere, little plated brackets. I always pick up bits of steel if I see it. Um, so I'll open up these holes to, to 10 mil and then um, I'm going to bolt these like that. I'm going to bolt them onto the underneath that rear cross member. One bolt hole there, one bolt hole there. And then weld this up, put some gussets in and, um, and then bolt this to that plate there. So these holes here We'll bolt to that plate there. So obviously this is upside down at the moment. It's going to be, it's going to be that way up, like that. So here we go. It's going to be that way up, like that. Okay. So it's going to go that way up, like that, with the uh, with the holes on the other side, and then I can put a spanner in there, hold it in with some nuts, and then bolt it onto that plate there. So that'll be the rear taken care of, and obviously. Like I said, you've got to be, you've got to think about all dimensions, all directions. So not only is it going to be hanging on it this way, so forcing that way, it's also going to be hanging upside down, so it's going to force this way. So I'm going to put a gusset in there and a gusset in there. And then when it's on its side, it will be trying to twist these off this way. So I'm going to put a gusset in here and a gusset in here, and that'll be good enough. Okay, so it's time to make some gussets and. Uh... What we're going to do is use the plasma cutter. You can see there in the background. I think you can see it. Yes, you can see it there. There is the plasma cutter, and that uses air from the compressor. It doesn't use any gas or anything. It just uses air. It's got a regulator on it, and it's from a company called Artec Welding Supplies. They're in Gloucester, and they are absolutely brilliant. I've got their plasma cutter. I've got their MIG welder, and I've got their TIG welder. But I'm still yet to learn to TIG weld. So um, for this, we use our welding mask, and on the side. We've got our adjustable switch here and we switch that to grind and then it doesn't dim it just carries on and if you can see through there without the headband in the way uh, there we go you can see you can see through there kind of the turf it's um, sort of pretty translucent so we're going to switch it on 
there we go and um, I've got a piece of steel here as a guide so I can get a nice straight edge and if you get this right you can get an edge that you don't even really need to file it comes out really really nice plasma cutters are incredible things um, <clears throat> and they're also a very quick way of making gussets and stuff so I'm going to cut off a strip here two inches wide this is uh, three mil steel and then I'm going to cut it into sections and then I'm going to cut it into triangles to make gussets so um, let's, I'll, I'll show you how this goes anyway let's see how it goes see how it works one of the biggest problems with this cold weather is the the fact that the mask will mist up if you breathe so you have to hold your breath um, I've tried putting face masks on and then my glasses mist up so let's give this a go and see how it works There we go, you can see where the where the sparks start coming back up, that's where it's not going through. So either you need more air pressure or you need more current. So what I'll do now is I'll snap that off. And it should snap off quite easily. You can hear it crumbling, crackling. There we go. And as you can see you get like here. You get a lovely cut edge along here. You can see where it's playing up. It's not so nice, but for what it is, it's just a bracket. We're going to, uh, you know, we're going to be welding anyway, so it's not an issue. So now I've turned the current up slightly, or turned the voltage up, should I say? So you should see now how much better it cuts. Look, you can see how nice the edge is there. That's ready for just a quick deburr, ready to weld. And it's, you know, you won't even cut your finger on it. So, um, there we go. And there we go, guys. There's the gusset saw cut out. As you can see, you've got a fairly sort of rough edge, but that does just knock off. Um, but you can see the actual, oh, that is still hot. You can see the actual cut edge. Focus. The actual cut edge is, is all right. You can see it's, it's not bad at all. Once you knock that slag off, and that's it. You can see on the edges here, like on this edge, get to focus again. Come on, come on. There you go. You can see I've knocked the slag off of there. There's hardly any any burr left. So quit running around with the grinder or even just weld it straight on. You've got to remember guys, people will say well this all looks a bit tatty and stuff. Yes it does, but it's only gussets for a frame to hang the chassis on a rotisserie. These aren't proper gussets that get welded into the chassis. I mean something like that is perfectly tidy enough to weld into anywhere. You know, so obviously like this, that's a, that's a bit of a mess. But you know, you could grind that up and maybe weld that no problem at all. And if you're really fussy you could build the edge up with weld and then grind it back. But um. 
that was basically down to me not having enough energy going in and um, and also I was jerking so yeah but basically I mean if you look at the rest of them they're all pretty smooth they're pretty good and um, perfectly good for this application here we go after a quick clean up with the grinder you can see they're all uh, all nice and ready to go now with nice clean edges and I've got the, uh, the square tube there paint all cleaned off ready to go and going over here this is my um, this is a bit of a coincidence guys this is my uh, Artec uh, plasma cutter back in its box and um, you can see what it is there there's the model and everything and it really is a brilliant piece of kit now what was really weird I was thinking I put this away in this box real neat and tidy and I'm thinking let me show you here look there we go I like to keep everything clean and tidy and in its box so there we are so now if we uh, if we look at this, I was thinking, I wonder how long I've had this. Look at the delivery date, 13th of the 2nd, 2015, and today is the 13th of the 2nd, 2020. So I've had exactly five years. So uh, that's how to look after your tools, guys. All right, guys, here we go. So I'm all jigged up now, ready to go. So I've got these two brackets here, the ones you saw in the bike ones. They're bolted up to the bottom of the chassis. You've got this box section here. As you can see, I've got two magnets holding it all together. Now, I've used a square. I've made sure that they're square to the chassis. I've also marked the centre. Let me show you here. This is imperative you do this. Don't ever rely on that, or these bolt holes, being in the centre. I mean, they're not even the same distance apart. They're just put in very roughly. So, what you need to do is come to the side of this tube, Mark there and then mark the centre to make sure that you're actually getting this in the centre of the chassis. Because if, if this tube is welded off to one side and you use this plate as your datum, then when you get the chassis on it, it'll keep wanting to fall one way because it will be off centre. So mark the centre on there, mark the centre on here, mark the centre on there, and then you can line it all up using a square, you can get in there and make sure this is centered. And you can see you may not be able to see but it is about three millimeters off to the left so you can see that if i had put it on just using this and i would have been slightly off it is very slight but it's enough to just keep making it want to fall over which is a bit of a pain um when you're just trying to get the the, the bolt in to stop it from the loop it, it can be quite a lot out and it's, if it's quite heavy then you know you take all the strength you've got to hold it there while you get the bolt in so that's there now, this is all blown up, that's all blown up. So now what you need to do is get it all big welded in. The main thing to remember here if you can use the plasma cutters, make sure your mask is turned back to, to welding. Again, because of the cold can't breathe so we have to uh, suffocate <laughs> Being attacked. So we've got 122, 122, so that's okay. There we go. 
That's all welded in place now, or tacked in place anyway. Now I can finish weld it on here, or I could um, finish weld it on the, on the bench. I think what I'll do is finish weld it here, and that way I don't have to worry about spattering it over the bench or anything. So what I'll do is I'll get some anti-spatter spray. This stuff is great, this water-based one. You can use Mr. Sheen. Don't use Mr. Sheen, it leaves oily deposit, so a waxy deposit. Just spray some of this on here and that will stop the, the spatter. It's a shame that GKM didn't do that when they built the chassis. Let's get you over here so you can see that a bit better. So you can see now that's welded down there and we're welded across the top there. And what I need to do now is this this metal here is um this black it's the it's it's probably a low quality steel, that's where you get all the spatter and everything. But I mean it's for this, it's absolutely fine. So I'm gonna take it off now so that I can weld down in here and then um, and then I'll be back. Right, so um, we've got the gussets all welded and everything now as you can see, but what I noticed is the one of the problems I've got is you've got the lower wall of the subframe here, which is all this is bolted to, and when I lean on it, I mean lean on it hard, I could get it to flex like this, so it's actually flexing the, the bottom of the subframe, the, the bottom of the cross member. So it needs a little bit of support, so I've turned up a couple of these little bushes on the lathe um, and the, the idea then is they're supposed to go you can hardly see the hole because of the light um, there's a hole there you can see there's one there fitted but there's a threaded hole here which you can't you can see if I go that way um, and what I want is that to sit inside that threaded hole and not up, up against the nut that's welded inside or the plate whatever it is and that way it won't scratch the paint when I put it back on the um, on the rotisserie because the idea is I'm going to spray all this in mid-air held up with an engine crane and then put the um, put the engine crane back put the uh, rotisserie back on so that way the paint won't get scratched on the back cross if it does I'll have to just paint the cross member again but um, what I'm trying to avoid is having feathered in edges and stuff so here's one here I've made up some it's a piece of uh, just a simple piece of box section and what I'm going to do now is weld this to this bolt here to this round part here and turn to the bottom of here and that will just because you think about triangles it needs it should really be supported this way as well but there's no point it can't go anywhere because this can't twist like that this hole can't move so with one diagonal brace in there that will do it that will support it and it will help it stop flexing on the uh, on the bottom of the um, cross -over. so let's get on and get some welding done
And there we go. Uh, that's it nearly finished. I'm going to want some, I'm going to put some gussets in here. And the gusset there just to uh, add a little strength and make that sort of more of a box. But um, yeah, how wide are all these? I forgot to turn the wilder down and blew that tube away. <laughs> as you can see this. But it's the best. But as I said, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to look nice. It's just going to serve a purpose and be strong. So those two, there they sit in those two lugs in there. And we've got our two M10 bolts going underneath. So, so go one and one way in. And then we've got two M5 bolts. I need mean, to get some shorter ones in. Just go in the back for me. I'll just screw in. Like so. member in place we're not putting any twisting motion in the bottom of the cross member so um and then basically what we do then is bolt this plate on like so and then this will go in as you can see that like an engine stand this will go in and that will form our, our pivot now, when you do this, you have to look at the chassis and just look at what it is you're doing and try and imagine the centre line. Um, obviously, if I had it up here, okay, well, if I had it down here, so the chassis would sit there, but as soon as I flipped it over, it would just fall under its own weight. It would be difficult to turn back over. Um, so what I've done is I've looked at it and sort of done a line roughly, roughly two-thirds of the way up the main chassis rails, and then you've got, I think I've got an equal amount of weight underneath and above the pivot so that's what we've got i've actually gone for a height of two feet off the floor yeah american imperial whatever you want to call it so that's going to bolt on like that um, and i'll probably put a couple of gussets in here a couple of boxes in here to, to stop it to, to twist off so there we go that is um that is basically part one of the video guys and uh i was going to do the whole thing in one but it's going to take forever so um, we'll call this part one and this will be the rear end. So that's done now. I'm just going to add some gussets in there. You don't need to see that. And then basically I'll put some nuts in there, put them 12 bolts and that will all bolt up on there nicely. And, um, and then in the next video, maybe tomorrow, I will do the front and then I'll show you how I've made the, the actual rotisserie parts to actually enable them all to swivel. So thanks for watching and um, hopefully this will go up today, which is February the 13th, and um, I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.